Hello class, let's look at how we can use LT Spice to uh, confirm that Norton's and Thevenin's equivalents work. I'm going to do practice problem 4.8. It's in page 140 of your text. Uh, if, you, uh, if you have an electronic text, just go look for practice problem 4.8. First of all, I'm going to build the circuit. Let's see, I need a voltage supply. Well, sorry there, because that's what I did. But if we go, if we go here to components and we type in volt, it'll give us voltage supply. That's what we want. We need a voltage supply. And this is over on the side. I also need a current supply. So if I right click, it'll that'll go away. I can just go up here and tell it uh, current, and there's a current a current source here. That's okay. Uh, now notice the current source is down. We want the current going the other way, so I'm going to rotate it. Uh, let's rotate it twice there, and we have well, there we have a current source. All right. Now I'm going to need a bunch of resistors in here. Let's go up here and click on resistors. Let's see, we're going to have one right here. We're going to have the load resistor out a little bit further. All right, now I need a couple of horizontally oriented resistors. Uh, so I'm going to come up here and rotate. Now, for the resistor in this orientation, current from top to bottom is positive. So if I rotate it once, now current from right to left is positive. Because I want current left to right to be positive, I'm going to rotate it two more times and get it in this orientation. All right, so now we have one resistor right up here. Got another resistor right up there. And there's all of our components. Uh, let's go in here and wire them together. I'm not going to make you watch all of it. I'm going to pause it while I go finish this up. All right, so there, whoops, wait a minute. I didn't quite get all the wires in. Like I see, I forgot one right there. All right, so now all the wires are in place. I need to tell it where zero voltage is. So I'm going to put my reference. Oh, no, that's, I don't want that. There we go. There's my ground. Put a ground down here somewhere. And we need one more wire attaching ground. Go from here to here. All right. Now that bottom node is ground. I'm going to want to know the output voltage at this node and at this node so that I uh, get an output which means something to me. I'm going to come up here and I'm going to use the label net. And let's call this node right over here node one. And let's call this V out. So for right over there, I'm just going to type in node one. There has to be no spaces in here. Everything chokes up. Node one. Let's make the other guy V out. All right, so there we go. All right, now I need to adjust the values for everything so I can just go over each component and right click and it'll ask me for the values. Right click, there we go. This is a 180 volt resistor. Excuse me, power supply. The current is right clicking two amps. Uh, my first resistor here, right clicking again, is 90 ohms. All right, I won't make you watch. I'm just going to go do the rest. All right, so here we have a circuit as shown. Um, now, the output, I haven't put it in a load resistor here because this is the output. And we what we'd like to do is be able to use this circuit to measure open circuit voltage and short circuit current, as we discussed in class. So if I wanted this to be open circuit, what value would I put in for R? 
Well, an open circuit is basically infinite resistance, right? So we just want to put in a really big resistor. Let's make it uh, 99,999,999. That's a nice big resistor. That is close enough to infinity for our purposes. We're going to round it down to three digits, so we should be okay. All right, now I should be able to come up here and run this guy, and the voltage I get at VO will be the same voltage as if this were an open circuit, so that'll be VOC. Let's run this guy and see what we get. Oh, I have to tell it how to run it. We're going to just do the DC operating point. There we go. All right, so this tells us the voltages at node one, the voltage out, the voltage coming in. All right, and so I see the voltage output VO is 90 volts. For my V open circuit, for this guy is 90 volts. Keep that number in mind. Now, if I want to figure out how much current would flow through here for we're short circuit, well, I need to change this resistor to a short circuit is how much resistance? Very small. So let's make it uh, point uh, zero, 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 001 ohms. That sounds like a nice small resistance. Okay. So that's approximately a short circuit. We'll learn it again. The current through this load will be my short circuit current. And it runs. And remember now, this is resistor R2. So how much current goes through R2? Look at there, 2 amps. So my I short circuit is 2 amps. So I just measured my open circuit voltage, 45. I measured the short circuit current, V2. Remember, the Thevenin resistance is VOC over ISC, so it is 90 volts over 2 amps, 45 ohms. And if you look at the answer in the practice problem, that's correct. So that's what we're going to do. That's what you're going to do for your problem.